Hey, so I actually filmed this video earlier today, but when I was editing it, I realized that something was missing and I wanted to tell you all why I think that this topic is important. See, the Vietnam War changed America forever. We were, you know, the good guys fighting Nazis and liberating entire nations and then came Vietnam. The war shaped society and culture and even our own relationship with our government. With the arrival of television, Americans experienced war like they never had before. It was live, nightly, in their living rooms. There was a draft, even though war was never formally declared. So young boys would you know, burn their draft cards and they were beaten, arrested, and then shipped off to fight without anyone able to tell them why they were even fighting. Americans would later find out that our government had been lying to us about the war for decades, that they knew that it was unwinnable. We haven't trusted them since. When the US entered Vietnam, there was not a single high ranking government official who spoke Vietnamese or knew pretty much anything significant about Vietnamese culture or history at all. Whether that was out of arrogance, ignorance, or maybe a mix of both, our leaders bet on the lives of millions that this would be an easy win and they lost. All of this matters because today, you know, decades later, we still haven't learned our lesson. We still go to war in countries with little understanding or respect for the local culture and history. We still go in without even declaring war, even though our constitution forbids that. And the Vietnam War marks the beginning of the decline of American exceptionalism. Now, I I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but it's something that we still haven't come to terms with. But in order to move forward, we need to understand where we're coming from. And that's what I hope to start to do with this video. So by the end of the series, I guarantee that you will at the very least know more about Vietnam than almost every single decision maker in DC at that time. Trust me, I read the Senate reports. Enjoy. For part one, we're gonna cover some of the events that led us to Vietnam in the first place. Because believe it or not, the Vietnam War actually goes back way farther than when American troops ever set foot in the country. To Vietnamese people, that event only marks the start of the American War. But Vietnam's war is a 2000 year long struggle against the world's greatest powers. China, then France, Japan, France again, and lastly, the US. That history matters, and the failure of American leaders to understand it is, in my opinion, one of the reasons why we ended up in such a mess in the first place. To anyone bothering to pay attention, there were a few clues over the years. So let's go back to 1945, okay? World War II has just ended, the Japanese are driven out of their Asian territories, and this charismatic young leader stands in the center of Hanoi's Baden Square and at last declares his country's independence not only from the Japanese, but from the previous 80 years of French colonial rule. He begins his speech with the words. Hmm, sound familiar? The name of the young man who quoted the American Declaration of Independence was Ho Chi Minh. Little did anyone know that he would soon become the enemy in America's longest lasting war to date. But Ho Chi Minh's rise to leader of Vietnam's Communist Party and Prime Minister of North Vietnam was by no means inevitable. He grew up speaking French and he studied abroad in Paris as many Vietnamese children of means during that era did. This is because at that time, Vietnam was part of the French colony Indochine. If you've ever had a banh mi or a café soda, then you probably already knew this. He was actually living in Paris when World War I ended and the victors gathered at the Paris Peace Conference to sign the Treaty of Versailles. It was there that American President Woodrow Wilson formed the League of Nations, and he claimed that all people had the right to self-determination. Given that they were people too, I mean, it was reasonable for citizens of colonized nations to assume that colonialism was no longer socially acceptable. Ho was super excited about this, and so he actually sent a letter to Wilson himself that went something along the lines of, Hey, uh, Mr. President, you've probably never heard of Vietnam because you think it's Indochine, but the Vietnamese people have actually been there for like a really long time, you know, like thousands of years. And you know, we really like our country back. 
So we're super down with this whole self-determination thing and it would be great if you could just support Vietnam and tell the French to bounce. His request was ignored. Apparently, he missed the footnote that self-determination only applied to European countries. Who knew? So he'd seek support for Vietnamese independence elsewhere, specifically with the Soviets, which led him to found the Communist Party of Vietnam. Then came World War II. Vietnam was still under French rule until the Japanese decided that it was their turn to take over. That didn't last too long though, because as we all know, the Japanese lost that war, badly. Which brings us back to that independence speech, which Ho called a little bit prematurely because Vietnam actually continued to be a French colony for another 10 years. That was until the French surrendered to Ho's troops during the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Now this is an important battle that you should know about because it was actually the first time in modern history that a European colonial power was defeated by its colony. With the French gone, Ho had finally achieved independence, sort of. The big powers got together as they do and everyone signed the Geneva Accords, which divided the country in two, the communists in the North and pretty much everyone else in the South under this new anti-communist government supported by, you guessed it, the US. Now there were supposed to be elections to unite the country under one government, but both sides violated the agreement before it even started. So the Northern army never really left the South like they were supposed to. And then the South, AKA America, decided that they didn't actually wanna have free elections because you know they were pretty sure that the communists would win. So instead, over 1 million refugees fled the communists to seek refuge in the South. A whole bunch of Northern Vietnamese soldiers stayed in hiding in the South and the US started sending in advisors to support the anti-communist government that they had propped up. This, my friends, is a tinderbox waiting to explode. And it's where the war as we know it begins. That's up next in part two.